starting to dine code, all of the blue then that is based on linear analysis. There is an implied non-linear behavior in there. Let me show you how it, how it goes. Now, there was a paper, and you should take this paper up and read it, because it's very, very interesting. Paper by DMR presented at the first, at the second health conference back in 1960. Um, I think it was in Tokyo or in or in the environment. Anyway, in that paper, the following was presented, that if you have a simple structure, if you have a simple structure, and you subject it to a ground motion, a time history analysis, all right? And you did a linear analysis. And you calculated the maximum displacement and the maximum shear force in that structure due to a whole time history analysis. You would get a certain value, which is a force and a displacement, and you can plot it. Now, if you double the intensity of the earthquake, and you still have the linear, you would essentially get double the shear force and double the displacement. So you get another point points up here. If you then make it three times larger, you would get another point. But essentially, the long and short of it is, under linear analysis, every time you increase the intensity of the earthquake, you would follow a line going all the way up there. Now. If you did the same thing over again, but this time you can allow the structure to yield. In other words, you allow it, the, allow the analysis to take into effect the effect of nonlinear, the effect of nonlinearity. You will find out that okay, you apply a certain level of earthquake, get the maximum deformation and maximum displacement, uh, maximum force. You get a point here. Double the effect of the earthquake, you don't follow up that way, you start going this way. And as you triple the effect of the earthquake, you essentially get a curve that goes like that. So the long and short of it is that when you take into effect nonlinear effects and you're shaking the ground, remember you're not putting the applied load on top, you're shaking the ground because if you put the applied load on top, you double that thing, you get a double the base here. We're not doing that, we're shaking the ground. All right, there's a difference there. So we come up here, and what we find out that when you include nonlinear effects, the base shear has a tendency to reduce. But they also notice that although the base shear did reduce, the deflection component of it maximum is also more or less the same between linear and non-linear stuff. So that's when they decided that, oh, we only know how to do linear analysis because we don't have the tools, this is back in 50 years ago. So what we'll do is that we just design it. We'll do a linear analysis, but we'll just design it for this reduced shear force. And then when we have to make sure that deflection is calculated and the deflection checks are made, we'll then divide that by the same factor so that we get the deflection that is higher. So we will design it for lower base shear but higher deflection. And that is what to this day the design code says. You know, you have the R factors that you divide by, multiply by, to reduce your forces, but the moment you have to do a deflection check, you divide it by another factor, you multiply by another factor, which is the CD factor, to bring your deflection back up. That's the background. So it does, there is implicit in there the fact that you have nonlinear behavior, and because of this damping effect due to nonlinear effects that we will, we will talk about in a little while, you are allowed to use the reduced loads. So even in the current code, but even in the current code, you do have nonlinear effects 
implicit, not directly, but implicit. The problem is the following. Here we had a very, very simple structure. You could, you could really simplify the structure to just a single cantilever. When you apply the load to a single cantilever, you, you've got only one load, one element or one object is actually yielding. Even if it were a simplistic structure, you know, symmetric, simple one story or two stories, all of them would probably yield at the same time if it's symmetric and you know, the same structure. But of course, these days we don't have structures like that. I mean, you don't have to look far just to appreciate the glory of structural engineering. But at the same time, you have to start thinking that, oh my god, because if you have a three-dimensional structure, that doesn't even have to be very complicated. It just has to have some kind of unsymmetric behavior in it of any type. When one portion of the structure yields, the whole behavior of the structure changes. It doesn't just go up like this and follow a certain pattern. It can go completely different directions. So this assumption that we're just going to do a lateral static analysis of the stuff and we're just going to then divide it by CV or multiply it by CV to get darker deflections and just we're home free doesn't work. So, as you get into, and, and now you have computer techniques, and some of the new techniques that I'll talk about this afternoon are amazing. This whole thing that we do step by step time machine analysis for those of us that have done some, where, where jobs are running for days and you're still not getting the answer. All of that stuff is going to change in the future. Different techniques are coming around, and I want to talk a lot about them this afternoon. 